Dude, okay. So today, uh, just randomly, like I was working. Uh-huh. This isn't even like, sometimes I think like, oh man, this is gonna be a fun story to tell on the podcast, whatever. This time I'm not. I just need you to like, tell me if I'm fucking insane for doing this. Cause I felt like, you know how everybody has those neighbors that they think are like busy bodies. Mm-hmm. They're like, oh, they're always trying to be in people's business. Yep, yep, yep. I feel like, I'm I'm on like I'm on the border in a sense of being a busybody because I was like, what the fuck just happened? So I'm sitting here working. I work from home. Um, I have a window right here that's to the front of my house, mm-hmm. and I'm sitting here working and everything. And I see this van just like reverse at like I swear like 90 miles an hour on my street, <laughs> like right there. I was like, what the f- what just happened? Like Fast and the Furious, fucking uh, some Paul Walker shit. He's like trying to impress his like baby mama and just staring at her in the eye. But so this van like shoots by, and then like five minutes later, what a cop car comes up and it's like a Crown Vic, and I was like, that totally looks like a cop car. Like uh-huh. it wasn't an actual like black and white. It was just a cop car, um, like the stereotypical cop model and a. Yeah, it was a cop. I was like, oh, shit. Okay, that Mm -hmm. is a cop. Mm -hmm. And he just like sat outside interviewing my neighbors for like 30 or 40 minutes. And I was like, and it was this van. This van was like sitting on my side of the street. And the cop was just like walking between them and my neighbors on the side and back and back and back. And I was like, what is happening? Yeah, that's super weird. So, of course. I mean, my nosy ass, like I'll admit I was being a little bit nosy. I was like, I was working. And the second I got to get off a call, I was like, I'm going to go get the mail. Ah, And so I, yeah, uh, luckily we had mail to get. So I, I mean, otherwise you would have just been like, oh, no mail today. What are you going to do? Whatever. I just act like I pick something out of the mail and put it in my pocket. And it's like, (laughs) Like, do you normally put your mail right in your pocket? What are you, some kind of psycho? (laughs) It's a little weird there. I'm just like, I don't like people to see my address. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I grab my mail and I start like walking back and the cop is like walking. So I was like, is everything okay? And he's like, yeah, everything's good. Which I think is a little bit weird because it's like, bro, there's obviously something going on here. And I don't think that like, you're just going to easily tell me, but also you've been outside my fucking house for like 45 minutes. Uh, yeah. Like, like just you give doing? me something, <laughs> like, you know, it's like, just be like, Oh yeah, this guy was speeding or like, Oh, it's fucking it's, your neighbors are insane. Like, na- I don't know. Your just neighbors anything. are murderers. <laughs> your neighbor might have like a body buried in their backyard. Like and just no anything, just any, any little tidbit, you know, but no, I get nothing. And then as I was walking in, I'm like, am I an asshole for wanting to know, like desperately wanting to know mm. what exactly went on over there? Or is I it mean, just like, that's just a normal thing. I think it's normal curiosity, but also it's, it's even more because it's like, it's your property, right? You want to know what's going yeah. on, especially if it's your own. Like if you see that on the street, like I don't give a shit if some like a cop pulled someone over. I'm not like, oh, I wonder what's happened. Like I'm just like, oh, Dude, a cop pulled someone over. But like, no it, joke. I thought somebody stole my roommate's car. Like I'm not even kidding. Jesus. Like because I saw. Okay, so I saw the van like bolt away. I saw the cop come, and my roommate was like off today, uh-huh. and I didn't notice he left, uh-huh. but his car was just gone, and oh, I was no. like. <laughs> And like, okay, it's basically just me. I've had bad experiences with parking outside of homes before, Mm. which sounds weird. But I think I've told this story before about how when I moved back from Pocatello, literally like two days, like the second day I was back from Pocatello, a drunk driver hit my parked car and just demolished it. And that's where the whole like this was somewhat my fault or i think he said this was mostly my fault or somewhat my fault and i was like i literally just stopped and i mean i feel like i don't go off on people seriously all that often like most of the time it's just a joke and people get it but this guy said that and i was just like my car was fucking parked (laughs) is entirely your fault yeah like what but yeah i thought so i thought somebody stole my roommate's car and i was like what (laughs) i was like (laughs) i don't I don't know what I'm going to do. Like, it's, and I, I was going to feel so bad if it did happen because, like, I have a window right there. Like, right. granted, I can't see Yeah, like, see what are you going to do, though? Yeah. Like, you can't do it again. Yeah, but I... I do enjoy the fact that you so walked weird. out there, talked to the guy, and he just said, it's okay. And you were like, all right, 
but knowing that like possibly the car was stolen, but you're just like, I've done all I could do. <laughs> <laughs> That's a solid point. <laughs> I'm like, oh man, I wish, like, I would have felt so bad if it actually got stolen and I was in the room, but it's like, I also didn't do anything <laughs> didn't else. Do anything. Like, you didn't even try. Like, ask a question, like, hey, did my roommate's car get stolen? Did my, yeah. so, was there, is this about <laughs> auto theft? Literally, a give. He, he comes out, he's like, have you seen my car? And be like, no, but the officer said it's okay. <laughs> Like, oh, all right. It's fine. It's good. It's, it's good. Fine. Yeah. You don't need it. <laughs> no, she was weird because these guys like sat there like they, they sat parked there in their minivan for like the whole time. I've never seen that minivan before. That's Granted, weird. I mean, I've only lived here for like two weeks, but still it was very weird. Yeah. I was like, what is happening? Right they now? were they were on two week vacation and then they came back and decided to steal your your roommate's car. Seems there you go. Seems dude. like the thing to do, man. I don't know. I, don't I know mean, what happens re- in Idaho, really? But maybe that's the thing. Uh, I don't know. I isn't it crazy? Like, okay, so I I've lived in Idaho my entire life, and I don't even know what crime is like. Like, really, there are certain places that I'm just like, oh yeah, I would never walk there by myself. Like, not even a little bit. Like, I I would get fucking like sexually assaulted by my cousin. Like, if I it walked happens. there, you know what it I mean? Happens. Like, shit's weird. Shit's weird. Yeah, like. You'd be like, no, dude, you are actually my blood relative. And they'd be like, exactly, <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. but I there are certain like I wish I would have looked up crime statistics, I guess, about, uh, you know, purchasing a home in this neighborhood. But they Probably seem cool. That's good enough. Yeah. You got? Come on. <laughs> you seem fine. You're just going to live there There's for, like, you know, years upon years. What's the worst that could happen? Oh, dude, I'm like 100 percent sure that I live next door to polygamists, which I'm totally cool with. Like, whatever. People want to do what they want to do. But like the people across the street from me just freely exchange each other's homes. Like, it's so weird. They just like walk into each other's homes constantly. Yeah. And I'm like, I we we have I mean, maybe that's just like after years of being in the same neighborhood, you just kind of become good buddies with certain people it depends on obviously the area or whatnot but i have the same thing on our street where there's like three houses where these people like the one guy was like cutting the other guy's yard like cutting their lawn and like doing like yard work for them and they would just like go over to each other's houses and i'm just like what's happening here like i (laughs) i can't i can't imagine like granted i'm a friendly person but i can't imagine at any point in the time of being here that i would get to the to a you know a, a relationship where i was just like hey fucking cut my lawn for me bitch like <laughs> it just seems weird fuck dude my roommate lives here and i'm almost not okay with him just coming in you know what i mean uh-huh. like shit's weird shit's weird it makes me uncomfortable hello and welcome to indie pod and indie games podcast your weekly source for all the indie games news you need to know this week we are bringing you three awesome indie game news stories kind of it's like it's a thing it's like e3 shit's going on you know what i mean e3 but- three stories come on now we got this <laughs> you got me there big josh boy but of course we're also going to be hopping into newsgram god bless the crowd and answering some of your listener questions this week we are recording the episode a little bit early so be chill. I understand that technically this news is going to be a week old by the time it gets to people on free free sources, but also it's like you weren't paying attention to indie games before. Like let's yeah, let's yeah, be come honest. On. Come on. Like any news from indie game sources is good news. You know what I mean? Yeah. With the exception of like, you know, fucked up shit. Then that's, you know, it's on the that's outside. True. Plus plus we did get like, we did get the day of the dev stream in here so it's like that was probably the main indie game thing you're gonna get right like otherwise you're probably everyone's just gonna be talking about like the xbox the square enix the fucking elden ring i mean elden ring came out are you losing your shit about that uh no like okay so (laughs) i for some reason i thought that would be different just like uh (laughs) no i'm just like ah no yeah i don't i See, here's the thing. I just, I don't get excited about games anymore before they come out. Mm. Like I, I try my hardest not to, because I just, I get so let down Gotta so often that, that now, low. yeah, dude, I set my, I set my bar like obnoxiously low now where I'm just like, Psh. it's so low to the point where like there are games that I was so excited to come out. And now I'm just like, fuck it. It's been like a year and I'm like, ah, oh. 
I guess you. probably check that game out, you know, like it's, uh, yeah, no, I'm, I'm, I'm mm-hmm. stoked for Elden Ring. I think it's awesome. I think that it's, it's sweet that it got revealed and it's coming out in a year, like less than a year. So yeah. that's super cool. That it's like cool. in January of 2022, but like ultimately, no, I'm going to try not to be excited for it, but I'll get it day one. I'll definitely get a day oh, one. Shit. I'm, right. I'm that excited, I guess. I guess like so. I'm, I'm yeah. going to try to have zero expectations, but, you're but still I'm excited get to get it on day one. Yeah. yeah I will it's not just get like, it. there's an MMO that I'm really looking forward to, which I know feel free to shit on that big Josh boy. But the minute, the minute MMO... those words, those letters come out of your mouth, I instantly like, there's a switch in my brain where I just turn it right off. And I just like, I'm like, Oh, your I'm butthole like, puckers. You like cringe. You're just like, what is that? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, there's an MMO coming out in August called New World, and it's like it, it's a Souls like MMO, and I'm really, really looking forward to to it. And I have been since I think it was, uh, I think the initial like reveal trailer was at like Game Awards 2019, 2020, something like that. Mm-hmm. But I've been really looking forward to it for a long time, and it's been pushed back over and over again. It's coming out like I think August 31st, and I'm just trying to have absolutely zero expectations like i'm just i'm trying to coast along i'm gonna try to just play world of warcraft until it comes out and then just like nudge into it you know what i mean dude i I gotta talk about some world of warcraft bro shit's crazy shit crazy but no thank you this is about indie games i would like to introduce myself vaughn hyde alongside my illustrious co-host the biggest of average just boys how you doing today be just boy i'm doing well i'm doing well uh we're doing this a little early, like you said, because I'm going to be on vacation. I totally forgot. I know, I know. It's are crazy, you going somewhere? Right? I'm going to. I'm are going you going to spread uh... the Rona abroad? Yeah, dude, that's what I do. <laughs> no, I got, I got my magnet shot. I, uh, I can now. You got your chip, dude. I got my chip. You're gonna go through like the metal detector, and it's gonna go off, and it's gonna go like, fucking woo, off, woo. dude. I fucking, I saw the funniest video because there's this whole big thing if you're not aware, which people probably are, where. There's a group of people who seem to be in this mindset of the vaccine makes you magnetic because they're stupid. <laughs> and so they stick things to their body. And Not even like, that it's a microchip that it makes them magnetic. It makes like them they're mag- fucking dude, magneto. Yes, dude. They they put things like metal, the things that, you know, would, would stick to a magnet on their arm where they got the shot. And they're like, look, see, it's sticking to me. And there was so the reason why it does that, if you don't know is because you have fucking st- like humidity or sweat or something. Yeah, Humans like are gross. Pants. Things stick to you. You're just an idiot. It's not magnetic. And so there was a guy <laughs> who was like making this big deal. Like I love watching TikTok videos, especially these ones, because they're all so ridiculous. But there was a guy who in the comments was like, put baby powder on your arm and then try it again. And so the guy's <laughs> like, let me show you. He's like, it's still going to work. And he like puts it, keeps putting it, it just keeps falling off. And he... He just ends the video. It's like, I'd like to apologize for being an idiot. And they're like, that's how the video ends. And I was like, yes, thank you. Fuck people. What are you doing? Oh my God. Well, at least he apologized. Like it kind of like, it's better than the flat earther thing. Like, did you ever see that? The flat earther documentary where they did the experiment that basically proved that the earth is round. And they're just like, they were like, no, <laughs> what's up? <laughs> yeah so it was i if i remember correctly i think they were like trying to show a laser and if the earth had a slight curvature like you wouldn't be able to detect it at a certain distance right but if it didn't have it you could see the laser and then like couldn't see it and they're just like the experiment must be flawed they're like and that doesn't like, prove the anything round. yeah he's <laughs> <laughs> fucking dumb it's hilarious but no I, that's awesome that he was just like that's stupid yeah. that reminds me of a stanley superhumans episode i don't know if you ever watched that no, no. i fucking love that shit when i was a kid but there's this guy i think in like tibet who thought he was magnetic because he could stick spoons to his chest yeah it turned out it was his sweat glands yeah, yeah that's yeah. what does and it he was just like suction cupping it to himself but that show was fucking weird dude (laughs) like there was a guy who like who was on the show because he could do really high belly flops and i'm not even joking that's literally what it was and he like his claim to fame was that he could do like he was like a daredevil and could do these crazy high belly flops and at the end of this episode he belly flopped from like a hundred feet up into a kiddie pool and it was by far the funniest thing i've ever seen like he lived he lived like it was cool right and 
the idea behind his superpower was that his body had enough surface area to keep him from dying by jumping into a swimming pool. And it was just like, <laughs> so weird. This guy was like six feet tall. Yeah. His body has a lot of surface area. Like it's shit's Jesus. weird. Shit's weird, dude. Uh, so let's get into some housekeeping real quick before we hop into what we've been playing. Of course, please check out our developer interview going live with Jake friend, the developer or lead developer of scrap Dackle. That one is going live on the 16th of June. So that's Wednesday, the 16th of June. That is one day after for patrons and two days before for plebes for when this episode goes live. So please check it out. Seems like an interesting game altogether. It, it, do you remember any bit of the conversation? Did you talk about how like the the game offers you to just walk away from people? Because that's easily the most interesting thing about it. Yeah. So I I also played the demo on stream for one of the game the demo Thursdays. Um, and I this game is so good, dude. Um, I'm super excited for it. But I do I do partially remember the conversation. Um, the the point about talk like walking away and talking to people was just really because everyone's going to have like a different opinion on on how much you really want to take away from the game and i kind of said that as one of my questions because i i mentioned hey aren't you nervous that people aren't going to experience a good chunk of the game if they're just walking away and his response was basically like good he's like if that's you know if i want the people experience to they want yeah, I want people to experience it the way they want. And then I want them to also experience different things. And I was like, yeah, that makes sense. Because then they could come back. Like you can have that experience of somewhat of, of different, you know, experiences or stories when they go in like a, you know, on, on Reddit forums or whatever and talk about the game. You'll have someone who's like, who has a totally different experience because they took an extra step in a certain zone as opposed to someone who just didn't take the time to talk to whoever it was about XYZ thing in the lore. So I think it's a cool like approach to it as far as like a mindset goes. Yeah, it sounds really cool. So please once again, check that one out. It is the developer interview with Jake friend going live on June 16th, Wednesday, June 16th. Uh, please check out the IndiePod store for our t-shirts and stickers. Check out our IndiePod YouTube channel. It's just o IndiePod over on YouTube. You can watch these episodes on video, which is super fun. Um, nah, you can check out some of Josh's like uh, older interviews and some of my older like demo impressions and stuff like that. Just a bunch of weird stuff we've done there, but please check it out. Mm -hmm. Subscribe, leave us a like, whatever. The, the fun thing, smash that like button. Smash like, that it, thing, baby. You know? Smash it hard, right. smash it good. <laughs> Please leave us reviews on any sort of, like, I guess, outlet in which you can do so. Specifically, iTunes helps us out a lot. At least that's what I've heard. That's I what they say. To, uh, actually get any sort of, you know, correspondence about how that is correct, but whatever, you know. One whatever. day, one and day, and someone last from night. iTunes will, will hit us up and we'll be like, this is why you need us. <laughs> Like an absurd amount of information. Yeah. Be like, I have 10 pie charts because pie charts easily the best chart, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, like here's 10 pie charts about why you should get reviews on iTunes. That's what I'm waiting for. And lastly, thank you so much to all of our amazing patrons at the $3 tier or higher. Specifically, thank you to everybody who is a patron just in general. You're all amazing. Giving us any amount of money is in a sense a dream come true that anyone would pay even a dollar to listen to this shit early or just give it to us. You know, it's fun stuff, but got to specifically thank the $3 tier or higher because that's what we offered. You know, that's what we said we'd do. Oh, yeah. So thank you so much to John. Just John. He's, doesn't have any more name than that, actually. Uh, we'll see. Mixomatosis, a.k.a. Mix. Zach Durham. Chase Hopkins. Philip Rinchow. The one better from Australia. Chris Penwell. Always drinking tea. Josh Nichols, a.k.a. Active Josh. And Sam Fillion from Canada. Thank you all so amazing. You... What? Did I just say thank you all so amazing? <laughs> I think you were trying to go for thank you. You're all so amazing. You just got so excited. You skipped some words. We're just so excited to talk about some indie games today. And we're just, you know, words. Why use too many words? I'm just going to crawl into a hole and die real quick. Is that You'll that sounds it. far <laughs> preferable, you know, to, right. to stumbling my way through another podcast. And that's it, folks. <sighs> Good night. <laughs> Thousand episode indie pods down. It's it. It's it. Yeah. It's just whatever. We're good. I just fucking said indie pods too. Son of, oh, I hate my life. So, but Josh boy, you've been playing a game called 
Yinglet? Yinglet. Is that how you say it? I, I think it's how you say it. I don't know. It's Y-N-G-L-E-T. Sounds like Yinglet. By Nicholas Nigren? Nigren? It's either Nigren, Nigren? or Nigren. Nigren. I'm not sure. Um, Interesting. Please tell me about Yinglet. Yeah, so this is a really weird looking game. It's very different. Um, it is a platformer, but their big thing is they call it a platformer with no platforms. That's their take on it. And so the the story behind it, uh, which there's not much, it's basically like this comet hits and kind of blows you and all your friends, like scatters you throughout this strange world. It's kind of like you're an amoeba. You're like a very weird creature with these like little Your sperm cell kind of um i guess you could say that i i don't know that that's what they're turns out you're gonna get to the end of the game and this is like the nutsack simulator this and is... your dad just got punched in the dick it's... and that's with the catastrophic event it's probably not the way they want to be uh <laughs> portrayed but that being said um it is a super fun game it's very trippy in that you have like very bright colors all over the place you have um in certain areas there's like these flashing lights that that are occurring that kind of like will trip you up a little bit but the way it works is you're this little guy who can kind of float around like you you basically can move and you're sort of like swimming through these boxes and kind of like a sperm i get it i get it i could see your little smile there your smirk um <laughs> But you're, you're swimming through these areas, and what happens is if you're not in one of those boxes, you'll immediately fall, just like you drop. And so what you do, your main mechanic, is that you have this, this swimming ability through these areas, and then you can also jump, like dash. And so what happens when you dash is you hold down a button, and you can trigger it with one of the, like, either the mouse or, or using a controller, which they say is the preferred method, with one of the joysticks. And so you angle it in a certain way to know where you're going to shoot off into. And then you blast like through a certain area. And the, the thing that they do is a lot of it is you're either bouncing through these things or bouncing off of areas. And you can like bounce off projectiles. And the whole point of it is there's a ton of like little collectibles and and interesting things where they have like these these areas that you can go in that will be removed or areas that based on you bouncing on certain areas will will make it so you can they could be accessible and you have to constantly kind of like keep yourself afloat in certain areas where it's it's like bouncing back and forth so it seems like at first glance this would be a very like peaceful game or tranquil and it would just be like oh this is so like cutesy i'm just like this, I hate you, <laughs> just this little sperm going through the world, right? <laughs> um, but it's not at all. Like there's a lot of the, the more challenging, like the puzzle ones can get kind of like, I, I wouldn't say it's hard. I, I wouldn't say it's anything where it's like, it's not a Dark Souls. It's not like gonna be, oh my God. But it took me a couple of tries to do some of the more trickier uh, parts. And it's just an interesting little experience because the, the music in it is super good. Like it's very chill. Um, and everything you do has like little noises associated with it. So it's just like the, the atmosphere of that world is super, super, uh, just consuming, I guess, um, is an interesting way to put it. Uh, but I, I really loved it. I ended up beating it. Um, I think it was in three or so hours. Um, so it's a short, it's a short little game, but it's definitely worth it. And then at the end, there's like some bonus levels and there's, uh, a, it's not really like anything different, um, but there's a negative mode, which just changes the colors. It's kind of like changing the world around you, but it's still the same levels, but you can restart it. That's kind of interesting. It's it's kind of interesting. Um, there's different difficulty levels, but I couldn't see a difference between any of them. I don't know what they meant. And my favorite thing- Maybe you're just too fucking good. <laughs> Maybe you're just too good. <laughs> you're just fucking, you're the home run king, you know? You're just gliding through this game. One of my, like the little sperm you are. One of my favorite things about this game is it's very, uh, even though some of those moments were kind of difficult, like I was saying, it's very uh, forgiving for the player because all of those boxes that you go into, at any point, if you stop moving, your character will just like kind of chill in there and a little pink line will draw around the box. And that just saves your your progress. So then if you die, you oh, go right cool. back to that box. And they did it in a way that's where you can cool. get a collectible and then die and quickly go back. And so like, there's a good way of like, this is the kind of game where I, I'm 
definitely going to wait because it obviously it, it came out recently uh, back in like 2020. Um, but the game itself, I think, has a lot of potential for a speed run uh, like community because there's so many cool little just ways that you can bounce your way through it. And like I was kind of experimenting in with it uh, of like, oh, how can I get through this faster after I would fail a couple of times and be like, I could do this a better way. Um, but I think it's really fun. It's a neat little take on platforming. Um, it is uh, pretty well received and it's only like four four fifty on Steam. So it's not like a crazy ask. Like it's a pretty good price for for what it is. Um, I did receive this for free. So, uh, take that with a grain of salt, as we always say, just because, you know, maybe I wouldn't have liked it as much if I had paid for it, but I still think I would have because it was a, a good experience. It's a short experience, but definitely a different one. That's for sure. Do you think the second that I brought up sperm or something, they were just like, why? Yeah. Why oh, do we do that? For sure. We gave a free code. We gave a free code to these fucking, they just these immediately fucking, regretted it. These fucking idiots. <laughs> Who can't shut their oh, mouth man. dude but like even like you're not a sperm but if that's like what gets you to buy the game like <laughs> hell yeah you could be a sperm like whatever gets whatever floats your boat i don't know man um it is uh it, it does have you going through these little like warp holes so you could you could think of it as being a sperm i don't know <laughs> i was also kind of smiling the entire time because before we clicked record i was like oh i gotta turn off my autofocus as you were moving i could see your camera like focusing and not focusing so it was going in and out and i was like i don't think josh remembered to turn his off oh yeah no so yeah, I, you can I don't see know it, like do it just a little it, bit it's it does it just weird. a little bit i do not yeah. know why it's doing that because i did turn it off and like my camera is still freaking out yeah, you can see it, right? It's just yeah. like... Eek, yeah, yeah, yeah. It eek, keeks, like, going in and out. I don't know what it's doing here. Yeah, it's really weird. Man, your fucking hand was super photogenic. <laughs> As it slowly, like, it gets nice and crisp. Uh, so, games that I've been playing this week, obviously, just play more World of Warcraft. Like, I'm this I'm enjoying it. This fucking this time, guy. Like, dude, okay, this time around, I have committed myself to playing... At least into the end game, um, I was fucking around in one of the like early expansions for a long time, playing like Mists of Pandaria because I really wanted a dragon turtle, and then like found out, uh, well, I was getting a bunch of like Pandaren gear that I was just like, you know what, I feel like this gear set looks kind of weird, so I want to hop into something else, and I ended up hopping into the Shadowlands campaign, which is the most recent expansion that they put out, and it's actually pretty interesting. Like, I got a slime companion, which is super cool. And there are, like, an exce Like, honestly, I didn't... I never thought I would enjoy, like, what would be endgame content as much as I am. And I'm not talking about, like, raids and stuff like that. I'm talking about what I would say is, like, hunter endgame content of mm -hmm. collecting pets and stuff like that. Like, um, I talked about... And I'm not going to talk about this very long, but it's the only game I've been playing, so there's that. But I... I talked about like last week how I always go across the map to get a certain pet every time I always get it because it turns out it's actually has the OG art asset for like tigers and it's it's very interesting it's a unique like art uh, model and I really really like it so I always get it even though it's super funny because it looks old. Like if, if you use the animal companion ability which lets you have two pets out at a time you can have like a really cool looking current gen tiger and then like a really shitty like polygonal tiger it's super funny mm. to me but i ended up like uh i i play solo it's like often a joke on these podcasts that i play mmos to play by myself so but weird. i so i play solo and there's like a certain type of pet that's best for solo players called a cleft hoof um and it's a it's basically like a big ox or a rhino and I wanted like an albino one. So I had to go to like a, a complete, I had to go to Draenor, which is, um, it's like an, it's kind of like an alliance zone, but ever since, uh, warlords came out, it's pretty much just like savage, like everything else in the game. But I was flying around and I eventually came across this, like, it's just kind of like a mini boss and i wanted to see if i could tame it because it was a boar and it was like oh you can't tame it so it's like whatever i'll kill it like i found my cleft hook i'll kill it 
uh, cleft hoof. So I killed it and it dropped a mount of itself. So now I've got this dope ass boar mount. And I was like, this is so cool. Like it was easily one of my favorite experiences in World of Warcraft because I've never had a mount drop before. It's never happened. And it's something that can happen. It's a very, very low chance, mm -hmm. but it actually can happen. And it just blew my fucking mind. I was like, hell yeah, I love this fucking game, dude. So now I like make sure I kill all of these bosses and stuff like that. It's just, it's so much fun. I'm having so much fun collecting hunter pets and stuff like that. Plus I'm going back, I'm, I'm going back on the classic gaming podcast. Uh, we're recording on the 22nd, so I'm not sure when that episode's going to go live, but I'm going to be playing some of the Burning Crusades campaign for World, uh, for World of Warcraft Classic. Right. So, because I guess Jay is super into it. Mm -hmm. yep. Like, Rob told me that he took, like, a week off to play Gotta. Uh, to play Burning Crusades. And then he basically had a friend, like, move in with him for a week so that they could play together. God damn. <laughs> like, that's what? nuts. I... <sighs> Sometimes, you know, you think about those kind of moments and you're like, I miss those type of moments back when I was, you know, younger and like in high school oh, and yeah. could just fucking do shit like that. Like that was, you know, one of the, the biggest things from uh, an MMO side is I used to be into MapleStory and my buddy and I did the same thing where we would just like, we would spend nights where we would be at each other's houses and we would literally just play that until like four or five in the morning just for no reason other than just like grinding and fucking around in the, that world and like yeah my friends and i would do the same with destiny we would even do the same with single player games when fucking skyrim first came out we sat in the room and, just, and played just, it all yeah, together for dude. no reason it was just so weird i miss i miss the old days of of just hanging out with someone and playing like a single player game because there's there's like good moments like that if it's like the right game mm -hmm. but yeah i i don't know it's kind of weird like now that i'm an adult I don't want to go to people's houses. Well, you're like, just, I, I you're barely just wanted to then. Okay. Here's the thing. Like agoraphobe shit aside, like I barely wanted to go to people's houses then. But once I started paying to live in a place, I was like, why would I go stay at your house? Why would I do that? Yeah, yeah. I literally have to pay to live here. For sure. And it would always piss me off. Even when I would have to go like sleep at my girlfriend's house, I'd be like, Psh, you live with your parents. You don't pay rent. Yeah. No. <laughs> And I lived with my parents and I had to pay rent. Okay. That fucking sucked. Like yeah, that, that does suck. Nah, bro. That does suck. Nah. But yeah, just playing a bunch more world of Warcraft. It's super fun. Super lame. Just, good uh, to know. All, all the good stuff. Can't wait for, you know, play, play new world in August, but that is so far away and not an indie game. So let's hop in to our news stories. Our first news story is over on IGN. It is written by a person whose name I have not yet gotten to because I didn't fucking open the, didn't Rebecca open the Valentine. article until right then. Yes, it is Rebecca Valentine. And it is Day of the Devs, everything shown, including Last Stop release date and Axiom Verge 2, uh, Summer of Gaming. I... I that's like a long and weird title. I'm going to be honest about it. Like, whatever. <laughs> it uh, seems more like on. an SEO search, <laughs> like tags. <laughs> yeah. 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 It's just absolutely what it is. But Big Josh Boy, did you want to run this down? Uh, yeah, sure. Do, do you want me to go through all of them and talk about each one? Or would you like to just choose three like we normally do? Let's do one. after after last week's. Maybe this time we just talk about some of the uh, the highlights of it. Some of the, <laughs> the good ones, because I don't know that I'm I'm ready to, to sit through uh, every single one of these, especially now that we're getting into E3 season, if we keep doing like it's just a lot, it's just going to be a lot. It's like a that's lot. our yeah. our next couple episodes are going to just be like this, where we're just like, let's talk about some games that we thought were good, because otherwise we're going to be spending hours here. Um, All right. So, what are three that really stood out to you in this uh, Day of the Dead's article? So th this, I guess, roundup. Yeah. Article. So this roundup. So before I talk about what um, what really stuck out to me, the thing about this is like. And this is kind of what I knew was going to happen. And I think we talked about this a little last week is, is nothing in this is really new. Like it's, it's new content, I guess. Like some of these we're getting more insight into, but there's nothing in yeah. this that I'm like, oh, I didn't know that was coming. Like, what is this kind of thing? Um, and, and I feel they did announce, uh, they did announce that there was going to be an Annapurna interactive showcase. Which yes. Which is weird. Like a showcase that announces a showcase. Yeah. I'm going to be honest. I do find that hilarious, but I'm still excited to, to tune in for the Annapurna interactive one. I know. And we'll talk about that in a second. Okay. Cole, calm your horse. Calm, 
fucking calm down. All right, cool, cool. You're like shut the fuck up. Shut the fuck up. Why you why you, why you stop? Like. Stop with these <laughs> these podcast spoilers. All right. Um, but that being said, the the main ones that I saw in here that I just fucking love and I can't wait to get more of is uh, the first one is Death's Door, which is the uh, Devolver Digital uh, developed or published game. Which looks super cool. You're this crazy. Oh, man. The crow it, people. The crow I don't people. know why that shit gets me so fucking hard. It looks so good. It basically looks like Hades. Uh, like, I'm not going to lie. Very similar in a lot of ways. Um, and I'm for it. Because yeah. I loved, like, the gameplay of it. I want to see more of, like, the, the you know, the step-by-step -step of what happens with that game as far as all of the little like minutias um yeah but that being said it's it's right there with what you had said about like i could stop hearing about this and i'll be fine i just wanted to come out and this will probably be a day one purchase for me like death store it looks so i'm glad we cool. did get gameplay though because initially yes. we just had that release that reveal trailer yes. which i th i believe had like a small amount very of gameplay, little very little but i thought that it looked kind of clunky versus looking watching this no, and the addition so of the hook shot so smooth. looks so fucking good yeah. dude fucking like butter it looks so good i'm i'm excited for, that was one of the games i wanted to talk about too yeah is death store because it just looks that fucking good yeah. and i'm pretty sure we'll actually have two of ours i think are going to be the same i'll let you know if they are probably um death store is already one death store is one my next is loot river ah oh, fuck it i knew it <laughs> yeah loot river dude because loot river it it appeals to two sides of me which is like the the heavy combat side that i really enjoy and the adventure game part and then it's got that weird like puzzle platformer aspect where you're like moving the world while you're fighting which i think is super both disorienting but also incredibly cool once you get that down like i'm sure that will take a while to feel like comfortable with it but once you do it's got to be so, so rewarding that you're just like, like you saw it in, in the trailer, like someone who was just running away from people and like creating this giant like map work and getting to a chest and just being like, ha fuck all y'all. <laughs> yeah, I loved that they specifically showed that they were just like, yeah, I'm actually just going to pull all their aggro, get back and just leave them in a fucking like island over there. Yeah, <laughs> which is super cool. I did think that that was really, really awesome. It's, it's really interesting because I wonder if there is an element of that of like, is there a pacifist run? Like, could I just be really good at my puzzle platforming type skills and just get around those enemies? Like, I think that would be super cool too of, you know, how do you want to play the game? Um, but regardless, that one is more of, I don't know too much about it, but it just looks super cool. I don't know that yeah, it's... Yeah, the concept is really interesting. Yeah. To, to be able to manipulate the the platforms in which you actually do battle on is really, really cool. Yeah. Plus, it kind of seems like weird, like, puzzle-esque elements, mm -hmm. even though seemingly that's not a part of it. The only thing that I personally like looking at it and thought it was kind of weird is that the camera angle looked kind of weird when they didn't have just flat platforms. There was a platform with a doorway, like an arch. Right. And there was an enemy behind it and the, the the dev whoever was playing it didn't seem to see them and i totally understand why because you literally couldn't you could just see like the tip of their spear right and i was like ooh, that's probably gonna get annoying plus the combat looks like and this is something we talked about before but being not feeling weightless but feeling like perfectly weighted like oh it's got to be perfectly balanced some thanos shit mm -hmm. and this looks almost too heavy. Yes, yes. Okay, that is one of the things where when I was watching it, I, I was like, oh, this looks clunky just because it yeah. feels very, very heavily. Uh, I don't want to say maybe, but like influenced in, in the combat style of something like a Dark Souls where I feel like there is a lot of time between attacks with one of those weapons that they were using. And I was like, that seems weird. Like, I guess it's because like the character looks so small. I feel like it shouldn't take that long to swing, but I don't know. It, it does seem to like they're putting everything into the swing. And I, I honestly feel like the only reason that it looks so weird is that for most of the gameplay, we saw the platforms move so fast, but mm. the character moves so moves slow. Slow. Yeah. Yeah, and it's very, very off-putting. It like really points out the fact how fast it is. Yeah. It's just like, 
Yeah, because I wonder if there's going to be like different weapons. Like, is there a faster weapon? Is there a way that you don't like? Have... So it did look like there were actually different weapons when they were talk in the gameplay when they talked about how you could get merchants and it showed like the tree. After that, he actually had a spear. Oh, okay. So I I'm assuming that. that. Yeah, I'm, I'm assuming that you can actually get different weapons that do different speeds. So. Maybe that was like a long sword. Maybe, or yeah, because because but... that would be that would be a a uh, a game killer for me. If it was really slow. Yeah, because I I just I just don't like that style. Like if that's the way the game just runs, I won't be able to play it. I'll be like, this is cool, but not for me. So. Oh yeah, I totally get it. Yeah. So I'm hoping I'm hoping not, but it looks cool regardless. I love the idea, the concept. I hope that even if I don't love it, that something else comes from it because it's just a very cool little niche to it. Um, and then the last one that I'll talk about is called Unbeatable. This is a rhythm game. It is interesting because you... So, like, when I think of, you know, something like a, uh, a DDR or an ITG, you have these four arrows that are coming up, and it's always in the same area. You have a, a button that would correspond to each one of them, right? You would have, like, left, up, down, right. And this one is somewhat kind of, it's kind of like that. But I think it's super cool because it reminds me a lot of one, Fooly Cooly, which is, an an, like, an older anime that... Uh, had like it's only like six episodes but it was super cool i loved it back in the day other people will will say um uh scott pilgrim i've heard uh but i i don't see it as much as fully coolie doesn't matter it's not important to it the music that so i played the demo and i'll say the music is super weeb like incredibly weeb which turns me off a bit uh i i what i didn't like a good amount of the songs in there, but the ones I did were so good, dude. They were so good. And honestly, I'll, 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 you know, I'll bite my tongue and I'll just, I'll, I'll go into the weeb zone for this because the actual like mechanics to it are super cool. The way it works is you have literally two, two tiers. There's a top and a bottom tier and you have notes I guess we'll call them coming from your left and from your right. And so to hit anything on the top, you just press one of the, let's talk in controller uh, scheming, you hit any of the face buttons. So A, X, B, Y, any of them will hit the top. If you want to hit the ones below, you have to hit any of the uh, D-pad buttons. Doesn't matter which ones you hit, just has to be one of them. But the thing is you're playing this and they're coming from both sides and the game, while you're playing, your character will randomly just decide to only look at one side, will look at another side, will then look at all of the sides at the same time, and it's constantly like moving and disorienting you. So it's super confusing and just gets incredibly chaotic really quick. Like I went, um, so there's there's a number of different difficulty modes. I was able to do hard mode uh, at the, the end of my stream while I was playing it, um, which... I think was a pretty good level of difficulty. And then I was like, I was like, oh, there's one called Unbeatable, which I guess goes, you know, coincides with the game. And there was a song that only had an unbeatable difficulty. And I was like, okay, cool. Let's try this is like the last thing of the, the you know, playing these, these songs. Dude, I got my ass handed to me. It was like, it was nuts. It was real tough. I was like, oh, fuck. But the, the combat to it, or combat's a weird way to put it, but like, because you're fighting things while you're doing it. But like the back and forth of it and the way it just feels is so good. Like, I think they did an incredible job with this game. And the, it, like, if you're interested in this, I know I've been talking a lot about this, but it's just because I played the demo. But like, if anyone is interested in this- No, you're this, good. It looks cool. I would so recommend downloading the demo because it's like a good amount of content. You get like eight or so songs that you can play on all different types of difficulty. Like, it's literally a game in itself that doesn't even need to be a demo. But then there's this whole other like backstory that each one of these songs will give you like, uh, a background into this character and a little story and there's like moments where you get to just walk around in like i think it's tokyo i'm, I'm not 100 percent sure and like uh talk with these different characters and it's like this 3d game that they just throw you into for a little bit and so i guess that's gonna go more into like oh there's gonna be an actual story tied to everything but right now it's just the songs i don't know it's super cool i i really i can't wait to see the final product of this because even though the songs are way too weeby for me I still think it's really great. 
Uh, so yeah, it does look a lot like Fulu Cooley or something like uh, Kill a Kill, like a yeah, yeah, yeah. Studio Trigger kind mm-hmm. of an anime. It, it looks very interesting, and and I like the idea of like the the main story beat is that music is illegal. Yeah, I think that that's really really interesting, and I I would probably be really into the story, but I there's no way that I'd be good at the game. There's no way I'd be able to get through that game. But it looks really, really cool. 100%. It's, I, I think it looks it's, awesome. It's, the art style looks really good. It's not too like, bad. Awesome. There's only two buttons you got to press. It's only two buttons. That's like, that's like one and a half more than I want to press. It's only you know? two buttons. Dude, it's so good. There's this one part where... So every one of them is enemies that are walking along your path instead of like an arrow that you hit so you have to like Mm -hmm. basically punch something every time you're like hitting them and there's just random times where this one big they look like uh like a uh, punching bag with legs that just run at you and they're all they're like there's this one character that's just a big red punching bag and he just like runs up to you and literally the point is for you to just press the the keys as fast as you can like just press a a bunch of times when he gets there and like just beat him up and it's literally just like <laughs> so like there's one part where you just like ah you just fucking attacking the triggers and i always love it because you're just beating up this poor little punching bag boy it's so funny to me <laughs> <laughs> all right all right the game looks really cool once again that is unbeatable for me the last game i wanted to talk about because like i said death's door and loot river were the ones that i was like i was really blown away by is another game that i've talked about like a million times but i just have to bring it up is garden story yep looks yep. really really good it was announced and we're going to talk about it in god bless the crap or uh news cram as well oh, okay. but it was announced that it's coming to steam the epic game store and switch this summer i played the demo and i thought it was fun but I wanted to know more. I thought the idea of like being able to actually wield, uh, like what is it? Uh, fishing rod was really funny. Mm-hmm. And, and I kind of just enjoyed the game in general when I played the demo. So I'm, I'm very excited to see what the game is like when it comes out this summer. So that would be my last one is definitely garden story. I think it looks great and I'm, I'm super excited for it, even though it's a, it's a little wholesome, you know, a little, it's a little, it's a little wholesome a little, for my taste. It's not bit. enough, you know, big ass anime titties, but whatever. We'll move on. Yeah. It's okay. We'll get there. I, I'm not going to hold it against them, you know? I mean, yeah. It's just like. It's okay, man. That's like, what we have. That's what you have Subverse for. Dude. Oh, my God. I got an alert on Steam that it went into like alpha. <laughs> yeah. Or yeah it's, it, that it's, it's early it access. Out, People can like, buy it. Mm-hmm. You're like, what? Mm-hmm. We're see like some how anime? many romances are in this game, big boy? Oh, there's, a, so, there's a lot of romances. Guys, I don't know. Uh, so, our next news story is over on GameSpot. It's written by Darian Bonthes. 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 I I don't know. Bonthes? This is and once again, every time I have a problem with a name, it is just because I'm not intelligent enough to figure it out. It has nothing to do with their name. They shouldn't feel uncomfortable for it. It is literally just that I'm an idiot. Just really <laughs> got to get that out there. Don't even feel bad about it. I'm just <laughs> like a white Anglo-Saxon male. I have no idea how to say people's names other than single fucking syllables and like Tyler. You know, if it goes past like two that's true yeah it's done yeah it's done uh that's also might be darren by the way I probably darren whatever moving on um annapurna interactive showcase coming on july 29th so really the i mean i, I don't need to get into the nitty-gritty of this really the publisher annapurna interactive who's apparently and they say in the article um that it is one of the best publishers according to metacritic this year which i or in 2020s um yeah. or last year i guess annapurna so i they've think been that's doing, really interesting they've been doing good stuff lately annapurna is a good publisher mm-hmm. like they choose good titles yeah. and so they are having their own showcase on july 29th it's going to be on youtube and twitch on their specific channels and it's going to air from or i guess at like a 12 p.m pt or 3 p.m et mm-hmm. why don't anybody why don't they say mst you know nobody it's cares like they about, don't even know that no, i live in idaho nobody cares about idaho get out of here it's fucking 
Escape's bullshit. Uh, but according to the publisher, the Artful Escape, which looks really, really good, Skin Deep, Solar Ash, also excited about it, Neon White looks really cool, That's Stray right. looks really interesting. You know? you know, just all the good stuff. Some this, good games. This goes to show how good at choosing projects Annapurna is yep. that they have, like, Artful Escape looks awesome. I, I mean, Skin Deep, I don't know. Haven't I haven't seen anything for it, but I'm just gonna go on a random limb and say it looks good. Solar Ash, super stoked. Also think it looks great. Neon White looks great. Stray, you gonna play like a fucking cat? A little kitty. That's awesome. A little kitty, you baby. Know? They know what they're doing, but yeah. they're all slated to make appearances within this and some other surprises. I think this is awesome. Really, why I wanted to bring this up is kind of just to. I guess, in a sense, get hyped about it, but not really. The The reason I wanted to talk about it is because I'm hoping that they have their own style. And that sounds kind of weird, but one of the things that I enjoy so much about the Devolver Directs is that <laughs> they take this like really whimsical, over-the-top style, and they, they just run with it. They're like, we're going to take our brand that exists throughout the games we decide to publish. It exists on social media. It exists everywhere. They have this consistent brand across all platforms. And they, I think that's awesome. I love that. And they kept it within the showcase. I'm somewhat hoping that Annapurna starts to do something like that. Um, because I, I like Annapurna a lot and I think it's really awesome, but I'm, I'm hoping that like that, that's, I guess I'm hoping that they create their own identity within this showcase and don't have the kind of like boilerplate. Okay. Here's the developer introducing their game and this is their game. I, I hope they don't go that way. Granted, Annapurna seems to be fairly buttoned up and fairly polished. So maybe that's, they will be doing something like that, but maybe yeah. that's what, maybe that's what will set them apart is that theirs will be so polished because I believe Annapurna is actually also a publisher of uh, independent movies as well as independent games. Yeah, there's so. there's uh, it's called Annapurna Pictures, and so yeah. they have uh, basically a bunch of different media forms of television, of uh, movies, of with interactive, of games. So it's a pretty big company. It's kind of the, it's one of the reasons why even though that company is still like an, an independent company, I I don't see this getting as crazy as like something like a devolver digital and granted i don't think a lot of people are trying to be devolver digital because that that's a clear like that's their niche that's their brand is that they're very like edgy um annapurna mm -hmm. i don't think you're gonna get anything like that i think you're probably gonna get something that that will be i'm assuming like high caliber in quality but i don't think it's gonna have the same type of character that maybe you're looking for as far as i don't think annapurna is gonna do anything that's risky with this i think it's oh, i don't want it to be risky i just want it to not look like everyone else's i don't think you're which gonna, sounds I don't, weird i don't think you're I guess gonna that's get that literally that's, the definition of risk yeah, i don't know why i just said that that's what i mean is i think you're gonna get a very standard like it's gonna have a person who steps up and it's like hi i'm bob from annapurna interactive and i'm here to talk to you today about blah blah, blah all the things we're excited to talk about what do we got for us jenny and then jenny from one department uh next over is gonna be like well today we're gonna talk about well i don't know why that's jenny's voice it's clearly some guy that that is probably bob's voice you don't know fucking jenny, i don't know dude. i guess that's true that's true i don't know but <laughs> jenny you could do whatever you want baby girl you good um anyway this is a weird tangent uh i don't think what i'm saying is i don't think they're gonna do anything that's not something we've seen from a nintendo direct a uh you know an xbox like the playstation whatever the fuck they call it i don't care about the naming conventions they're all just showcases for trailers and demos um because the state of play i think is what you're looking for yeah, 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 yeah. it doesn't matter anyway point is uh what they're like <laughs> i don't fucking i don't care. fucking care. i don't i don't i don't it's not an indie game i don't care about them um they they're clearly looking at what's popular and what's working right now and so i don't think they're going to take the risk if they did super cool but i think we're probably going to get a really professional looking just showcase of these different games because we've well that's the thing they can make it their own just by making it look professional because let's be honest 90 percent of showcases look like some youtuber sitting in front of a green screen no for sure i mean this is a this is a big like they work 
in you know television media like they have other departments from their their other side of annapurna pictures i'm sure they can figure out how to do this in a way where it looks professional i just don't think we're going to get anything other than what you would see on something like a nintendo direct which i think is fine like i i don't personally want them to do more than that because honestly i feel like what we're going to get is these couple of games that have been listed right here um because it said they'll be making appearances like they said a few other surprises but we're really just gonna get like trailer after trailer and then that like one more thing of like here's an annapurna like hit that we just pulled out of our butts oh i think one million percent we're gonna see outer uh outer wilds dlc i you think, I think yeah? we see the yeah i think we see the dlc especially because um if you actually go to the annapurna pictures like this sounds a little weird but if you go to the annapurna pictures website mm -hmm, mm -hmm. um outer wilds is actually featured on their front page mm. and and i feel like i mean granted it's in one of their like smaller thumbs and everything but there was that little bit of a tease of possible dlc like a couple weeks ago that we talked about right and now it like uh it wins uh best game bafta like i guess that was 2020 news that it won the best game bafta and uh they like are gonna have i guess some uh some other things like i feel like the one more thing is definitely going to be it's it's going to be outer wilds dlc yeah yeah and i think, I think that would that'd be sense. awesome honestly i think people would get pretty fucking stoked for it because that game is sweet the people who it's like the best horror game i've ever seen yeah the people who play that game really fucking love that uh so i can imagine um i think that would be cool i think i just honestly i just want to know more about neon white just give me more baby oh yeah Ne I mean, Neon White looks so interesting, like so the, cool. the mixture of, of card mechanics and that really, really fast-paced gameplay looks really cool. Yeah, I want to know about I'm, it. Yeah. Well, I guess, hey, we're going to see it during this Annapurna Interactive Showcase. So once again, that's going to be taking place on July 29th at 12 p.m. PT and 3 p.m. ET. Yes, sir. I don't know when that is MST, you know. But whatever. Uh, well, if it's 3 p.m. Nobody ET, likes Idaho anyway. Then it's 1 p.m. MST. I'll be at work. Horse shit. It's like they don't even know me. Oh my god. It's fucking garbage. Don't they care? So our last news story is over on Nintendo Life. It is written by Ryan Craddock, and this is actually really this is interesting. This a super cool story. Yeah. This is kind of like the the like cyclical nature of everything yes. that eventually like old things become new mm -hmm. because they become popular because they're old. Like it's all sorts of weird shit. So this is exclusive super rare shorts on skipping switch eShop with physical only games. So physically indie publisher or uh, physical indie, physically, physically physical indie pub dude. And then I said, under Oh my God. What are you why do I exist, you know? I don't know. Uh, okay, Should so I start reading? Are we going to take a change? Physical <laughs> indie publisher Super Rare Games has announced a brand new publishing label that will release new Switch titles only available in physical form. Super Rare Shorts, as it will be known, will soon host a lineup of brand new and original titles released exclusively under the new brand. They'll only be available on Switch, so no, Steam won't get a, a look in. I, I totally think they're going to come to Switch. Like, I mean, not Switch, Steam. Well, They'll come to Steam. Yeah, we'll, we'll talk about that in a second. I have a whole... Let's be honest about it. Uh, and they won't even launch on the Switch eShop. Sure they won't. Sure they won't. Mm -hmm. This is like going to be some Playdate shit. Jeez. Where like that worked because it was a gimmick. But I feel like yeah the no okay so i guess we could just kind of talk about this the yeah. uh the first game in the lineup is yet to be announced title from glass revolver uh the developers of ida and the i've been like following whatever they're developing i don't know if it's for the short but whatever they're developing on twitter right now looks really really fucking cool hmm. if it's for the short i will buy that game oh damn that game looks awesome oh, damn. so just saying but big josh boy how do you feel like this and how weird is it that they're doing this specifically just to combat discoverability on uh, on digital platforms? Because I find that hilarious. I think so. OK, breaking this down, my my mental state was like, this is cool. Mm -hmm. And then I started thinking about it and I was like, this is dumb. And I was like, I don't think so. 
Like I get the idea of this being your market push of like, it's a, it's a gimmick, right? It's, it's us saying like, oh, you can only, it's that, that idea of because it's limited, it's worth something more than what it is, yeah. which granted these games are probably going to be great, whatever they're, they're pushing, right? Like I'm not trying to knock the game. I'm not trying to say they're going to be bad games or anything like that, but I think this is a, a clear ploy of like what Nintendo does or what the, what Disney has done with the Disney vault of being like, you can only, it's like artificial scarcity yeah, creates it's, demand. They're, yeah. they're just trying to push this, which I get it to get people to be like, Oh, we should know about it or we should get it. And I think it's cool for those who, who, are into physical goods but like this right here is a game chain like game killer for me in the fact that i don't even like i don't even want to know what they're doing because i have no interest i don't want a physical goodie i don't want your game no you're gone i'm out of it dude you could fill up those shelves even more oh, those bro. shelves though no. i see some i see some spare room up those there on the top you could slot some switch those, games in there bro those shelves are good no i, I can't get rid of you you're up there <laughs> That's, yeah, that's you, baby. I, what's me? The little card up there. There's one that's me and my wife, and then it's you and yours. Your little... Is that what that is? Yeah. <laughs> I didn't know that. <laughs> oh, that's super cute. Oh, man. <laughs> I had no idea that that's what that was. <laughs> oh, that's awesome. <laughs> oh, but what I was going to say, like, also on, on, your, on your thing is, like, I, I think this is such a weird idea. Because like they, they were like discoverability is so hard on digital platforms and they say that like they were kind of beaten down by the fact that like really great games weren't succeeding because they couldn't be like people couldn't find them on digital platforms. But for some reason they think it will be better in physical and it's just like you realize that there's a trend in physical games right now where physical stores are going out of business yeah. and People learn about things because of digital releases. Like games have digital releases for a reason. It's because people do not want to buy physical. And slowly, year after year, we are seeing a big uptick in people who just want to buy digital. And like I think, uh, like last year, I, I can't remember the specific statistics, but it's getting upwards of 70 to 80% of all games purchased are purchased digitally yeah. instead of physically. Uh, granted, I believe these are like specifically PlayStation statistics because they release that kind of stuff. Yeah. Um, yeah, whereas yeah, yeah. like, I believe Microsoft doesn't and neither does Nintendo, but still like it's, it's pretty insane to see this massive like digital market granted like we've talked about in the past, discoverability is a really, really big issue. Yeah. But I just don't think I this is how you like solve these it. games. Like yeah. I feel like these games are being created to die. Right. Like they, right. they literally were just like, Oh, we're making these this way. Like we chose this specifically physical only medium so that people will purchase them. And I think there will be a lot of people who purchase them. And I think the 5,000 copies that they are planning on selling, I think that they will get sold. But I don't know, like, I don't know. I just feel like 5,000 copies sold yeah. of a game is a very low bar, like a measure of success. Well, I also, when, so so before we get too, too caught up on that number, going like deeper into their, their questioning, it makes it seem like they're going to produce more. It's just initially 5,000. But oh, okay. what you're doing- For the, like the initial Yeah, pre-orders. but what you're doing is you're stop gapping yourself and you're becoming a blocker that like- one of the biggest issues with physical goodies is like the 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 actual shipment of these goods and getting them to people and the production of things is that you're putting extra steps involved to a point where there could be a a bunch of like what if this blows up and people really want this and no one can get it just because they they have this idea of like it's only physical goodies you can only have it for for that sense and then they have to like roll into production later and the thing that i'm also wondering if they're going to show up in retail stores or if yeah i don't know it's going to be like an online only pre-order thing uh because i i honestly like the majority of the physical games that I purchased through limited run was because there were retailers like one of my, my favorite local shops, VIP games had limited run games. Mm -hmm. GameStop did not. 
uh, Walmart started to carry a few, and I don't know why, and I thought that was weird. I bought Aegis Defenders from Walmart. Granted, they also sold it for $60 when everyone else sold it for way less, which is total dog shit. Mm -hmm. But, like, I think these have to also be in stores. I don't think that they should be online only, if I'm being honest, because... I just, I, I don't know. I feel like Super Rare Games isn't a big enough brand right now. Right. Like, Limited Run Games has kind of, I don't want to say cornered the market because lots of people do physical goodies. But I feel like Limited Run Games has kind of like cornered the market in people's mind share of yeah. limited physical releases of indie games. And right, right. It's the same concept of like Uber and Lyft that people will still say take an Uber even if you're using Lyft, right? Like their name brand yeah. is a little more recognizable than anything else in that space. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. And I feel like Super Rare Games is is coming up. They're putting out a lot of like great stuff and they're starting to have like really, really interesting physical goodies and really interesting like choices in what to publish. But also I just feel like doing physical only is a bad idea yeah i'm gonna be honest. i think it's and here's the thing is like in the interview that you read in this article which people should click on the link i think it's a an interesting read in general but like when you read it they they ask the question of hey say this game blows up right are you gonna then make it digital and they said no and i think they that's will. crazy what are you talking about like, yeah, that's stupid. I don't... Especially because it goes against their literal... Their whole like, logic of why they're doing yeah. this. It's discovered. Like, we, it sucked that we didn't uh, couldn't get discovered. And it's like, if your game does get discovered, will you release it? Nah. nah I don't know. <laughs> like, you guys were dicks about it before. You don't get to have it now. And it's just like, you're literally just keeping yourself from selling more games. I don't know why you do that. It seems, <laughs> it seems super strange. I, I don't know. Um, this might work out really well though. It, like so, granted, yeah. I don't think like however much I enjoy physical stuff, I'm kind of like, I feel like both of us are detached from like what would be the collecting communities of these games. So yeah, it's sure, very possible sure. that there is like a subset of gaming culture that thinks this is so fucking cool. Granted, oh, yeah, I think sure. it's really cool. I think it's like a really, really cool initiative, but I think it could combating discoverability and their refusal to bring it onto other platforms is very weird yeah yeah i and i love the the idea of combating visibility issues in our market of video games just because it is such a big problem right now uh i i just don't think this is it <laughs> like it's just this isn't the way to do it but we'll see i'm i mean regardless i'm sure like i said the games will be great I will be interested in hearing how it goes, but I have no interest in picking it up because I just don't want anything physical. I mean, the one thing that I have to make sure I say before we move on is that seriously, like, no joke, I think we need to give massive kudos to Super Rare Games for actually trying to do something about discoverability where I feel like everyone bitches about it, but no one does anything about mm -hmm. it. Like, no one has tried to change anything. No one has, has like, really, and I mean, made a concerted effort to change things. I'm not really talking about developers because it hurts them. Like, they, they don't really have the option of combating discoverability. Like, they try to get as many people to look at their stuff as possible, but it's kind of just luck in a, in lot, a lot of, of ways. ways yeah. Like, yeah, it's, it's just, like, succeeding on the internet. It's, a large portion of it is just luck. And so I yeah, don't, don't know how I, do I don't blame developers in any way, but I feel like most platforms are kind of like bitching about discoverability, like how hard it is to discover, like, uh, or most communities, I guess, are bitching about discoverability, but their platforms refuse to do anything about it. Like PlayStation not doing shit for discoverability, even though their store's garbage and people would actually like to find stuff. Same thing goes with Steam. Same thing goes right. with like basically every digital marketplace. But seriously, just a massive kudos to Super Air Games for actually doing something about it. Being like, you know what? We're going to try to make these more discoverable. Granted that this is the only way I feel like it's a weird way to do it, but like, <laughs> but Hey, let's give it a try. Fucking, Why not? Yeah. Huge kudos for them to them for doing it. I, it's a really interesting concept. 
I hope it works well. We'll see. You know? we'll see. But whatever. Uh, so we've covered these news stories to death, some might say. So it's time for us to hop into News Cram. Cram. News Cram is our weekly wrap up segment where we, the hosts of IndiePod and Indie Games podcast, cram you full of all sorts of Indie Games news. This week in News Cram, we have one quick news story before, of course, we hop into a whole bunch of new stuff. So, our first and only quick news story for today comes by way of Polygon, where it is reported that Iron Gate AB, developers of the uber popular survival game Valheim, has officially thrown out their original roadmap. This is due to a new focus on polishing the existing experience. Luckily, for those still chomping in the bit for new content, the Hearth and Home update is still scheduled to release sometime in Q3. 2021 so that's pretty nice they said because of their massive success that it revealed a lot of bugs and they're like hey we got to fix that before we do new content and it's like good job that's how you should do it don't add more shit fix the shit that exists awesome i love it uh now on to some new stuff our first seven items of new stuff come by way of nintendo life where it supported that doing soft developers of the popular 2d metroidvania game gato Roboto, is once again joining forces with publisher devolver digital but this time they're bringing you a physical only game titled physical Demon only throttle yeah it's physical what only. the physical fuck only. Right? What is up with this? Like, see, this is the thing. Like, a fashion, every, like, trends are cyclical. So, it is very possible that physical is about to make a gigantic comeback and we're all about to shit our pants. You know what I mean, Big Josh Boy? Yeah, that is all the, uh, the information that was given is that the game exists. Uh, seemingly during Devolver Showcase during E3 that they're actually going to talk more about it. I think the cover art of the game looks really cool. If that says anything, I think it looks really interesting. I, mean, I, I did. So hopefully the game. I did really awesome. enjoy Gato Roboto. So didn't we? Not a nine though. You know. Didn't we all? Like not high enough. Uh, didn't we all review it? What did I give it? I think I. You and I did. I think you gave it like a seven or a seven five, and I gave it a nine. Yeah, you're crazy. <laughs> it's it's not a nine, but it's a good game. <laughs> Uh, the act that action RPG garden story by Picogram is headed to the Nintendo Switch and PC via Steam sometime this summer. That old school platformer Frogun by Molgato is heading to all current and last gen platforms, including PC, sometime in 2022. That 2D Metroidvania Mind Seize by Kamina Dimension is getting the physical treatment with some help from First Press Games, with pre orders going live on June 12th. There are actually like multiple different, I, I didn't include it, but I would head over to, I believe, uh, Physical Press Games their or first press games their website because i believe there are like three or four different editions that you can buy into for the mind Seas, uh physical copies so seems really interesting hmm. if you're into that uh that monster tamer monster harvest by maple powered games has once again been delayed it's now scheduled to release on august 19th 2021 that soccer game super soccer blast america versus europe by unfinished pixels is out now on both the nintendo switch and pc via steam and lastly that monster tamer coromon by trag soft uh, is headed to both the Nintendo Switch and PC via Steam sometime in Q1 2022. Now over to Polygon, where it supported that run and gun shooter Mighty Goose by Blast Mode and MP2 Games is now available on all last gen systems, including PC. Yeah, I refuse to I refuse to ride them all out now. I'm not gonna do it anymore. Even though I did it several times in this, I'm just I'm not gonna do it anymore. You get last gen now. Okay. No more last gen. It's gone, baby. That includes the Nintendo Switch, by the way. My thought process, PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Switch. That is last gen. Leave me alone. Nothing's releasing on the Wii U. If you think that that's last gen, that's like, leave me alone. I'm moving on. Uh, now over on Twinfinite, where it supported that tactical RPG with roguelike elements, Metal Slug Tactics by Lakir Studio, or Lekir, I don't know how to say it, uh, is headed to PC via Steam, yet no release date was given. Now over on IGN, where it supported that cinematic puzzle adventure game, Planet of Lana by Wishfully is headed to Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One, and PC sometime in 2022 that open world social adventure game sky children of the light i've said children of light 
a thousand fucking times before today realizing that it is actually sky children of the light what's i the swear difference? to god it's, they just inserted that. it's the old outer like, worlds outer wilds Dude, this is some mandala effect shit where yeah. I swear to fucking God that that the was not there. <laughs> I swear. That's tough. What the fuck? Uh, so Sky Children of the Light by that game company is headed to the Nintendo Switch on June 29th. That simulation game Two Point Campus by Two Point Studios is headed to all current and previous gen platforms, including PC, sometime in 2022. That action platformer Salt and Sacrifice by Ska Studios is headed to both PlayStation 4 and 5 sometime in 2022. That action-adventure game Sable by Shedworks is headed to the Xbox Series X and S, Xbox One and PC on September 23rd. And lastly, that 2D puzzle platformer Golf Club Wasteland by Demagogue Studios is headed to PlayStation 4, Xbox One, Nintendo Switch, and PC sometime this August. See, I did it there. I said I, was, I did it already. Seemingly later in the dock, I just got sick of it. And I was like, nah, yeah. not going to happen. I get it. And to round out the group of on GameSpot is reported that action platformer Solar Ash by Heart Machine is heading to both PlayStations 4 and 5 sometime later this year. And that multiplayer open world survival crafting game, Pal World by Pocket Pair, is headed to PC via Steam sometime in 2022. That game looks interesting, by the way. Mm -hmm. It is a monster tamer with guns. And I'm not even joking. They have like AK-47s in a monster tamer. Like, it's so weird. So do you use it on the people or on the monsters? I would assume both, but I have no idea. Yeah, you, you like collect monsters and they help you build shit and like defend. But I don't know. I think it's weird. Like, so strange. it looks really, really interesting. And mm -hmm. it's got like a cartoony aesthetic. So you're just like. Oh, that's, up with this? that's super weird. All right. Okay. Yeah. I'll have to check that out. I'd recommend checking it out if you're if you're interested in what a like survival crafting monster tamer would be like with AK 47s. It's a very specific niche, but if you're interested in it, fucking it's check there. out Power it's World. There. All right. <laughs> so Big Josh Boy, it is time for us to get back to the creators because we've been blessed with so many amazing indie game news stories. Now, we're going to hop into our next segment. God bless the crowd. This is where Big Josh Boy hops into all sorts of crowdfunding sites, finds something awesome for us to talk about, and we do just so. This week, we are headed over to Kickstarter, as per usual, but we're going to be talking about a game called Saijin. Am I? Yeah, that sounds about right. I, Saijin. Okay, Saijin, the Cyborg Ninja unique precision platformer. Use only your mouse to beat this challenging platformer featuring accelerated dash, dash actions and fast-paced gameplay. The developers are asking for $5,005. They currently have, at the time of this recording, $3,418 with 22 days left to go and 31 backers. To get in on the ground floor and actually get a copy of the game, I believe it is about... 16 us dollars yes so big josh boy what do you think about saijin it looks pretty cool i think this uh is probably a game that you would never play because it looks tough um, oh yeah it does <laughs> uh yeah. it looks super fast paced i feel like it could get kind of annoying just because man there's a lot happening on the screen in in some of these uh these images and some of the the trailers but i mean granted it's all here it's all it with yeah the it's just it's the same it's the same concept of my it's only two buttons thing right <laughs> it's only two buttons that's a good point what are you gonna do that's a good point this one's this one's only one button you just gotta, all you gotta do is make a click um it's one button in the rotation of your wrist bro just, and you're just like it's too much it's, it's too just much. too much i can't do it uh I, I think it looks pretty cool. I don't really like the, the idea of a cyborg ninja. Like, whatever. It, it's okay, I guess. Um, Isn't that what Genji is? I think is what his name is. Yeah, Genji yeah, from yeah. Overwatch. Isn't he a cyborg ninja? Yeah. Because Hanzo, his brother, tried to like straight up fucking murder him. Pretty much. I'm pretty sure that's the lore there. Yeah. So this is just Genji the game, which why not, right? <laughs> um, yeah, okay. Okay. I think it's cool because, you know, it just, it looks like, 
really good gameplay wise. I like the fact that there's like little puzzles that they go into it as well. The combat looks interesting. Um, looks like if, if you're into a really fast paced game, but with simple mechanics that they just, you know, they make one simple thing very complex. I think you're going to enjoy it. Like I, I don't, like I said, I don't care too much about the world or, or environment of it. I think it looks cool, but I just, I didn't look into it because it's really, it's just, it's like, I feel like if you're going to like this game, you're going to know right away. Like if you just watch the trailer, you'll be like, ah, yeah, this is probably a game for me or not. Yeah, more than likely. I, w- I would definitely say so. Uh, for me, I mean, my initial thoughts of it, like while looking at it, I think it took me like three seconds and I said it looked a lot like Dundara, uh-huh. which I had to specify that it was the gameplay that looked like Dundara and not the actual aesthetic because it does not at all right. look like the game. But the gameplay seems to be very similar. I think it looks interesting. Um, It's definitely not going to be for me. Honestly, I would say that it looks like it, and I, I don't mean this is an insult in any way, but I imagine some people are going to like someone might take it this way. It looks like a mobile game. Yeah. Which I don't think is a bad thing. It, I think that this would actually work really well on mobile and I think it would be really fun. I, um, I don't know. Well, I guess it could because you would just tap where you want to go, right? Um, yeah, I would assume you would just have like the direction with one thumb and tap with the other. Maybe. I feel like that would be harder. Or similar, or just I tapping. feel like it would just be yeah, tap where you want to go. Yeah, I feel like I feel like the way you... you I feel like I'm making it you're making it. Yeah, you're making it really like, no, complicated here. Sc- you have a touch screen, but just fucking yeah, touch just, the screen. poke where you want to go. What are you doing, man? You got to use multiple fingers. Um, I do think it's really cool that you can change direction in midair. Though. yeah 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 i think that that's really awesome i think that this game looks very much like something where if you love quick fast you know just you want that speed in a game and you're looking for something where you can just constantly bounce around and go back and forth like this is the game for you right it looks super cool super fluid in a lot of it i think it's one game that you know it looks super simple but probably would get very complex really quick so I think there's going to be a lot of people out there who who want this. I don't think 16 I mean, granted $16 seems a little high for what it is based on just that mechanic alone, but that shouldn't like really define the price point for this. So, you know, I I think that it could still be worth it if you're into this kind of game. I don't know that this is going to be the game that I want to really jump into. It's probably one I'll wait on and see kind of how it it's received but so far they're doing pretty well for for having 31 days left uh granted i feel like they only have 22 backers which means someone is paying a lot of money out of their backers um because they're at three thousand four hundred dollars right now but yeah but that is a little weird i didn't even think about that yeah yeah yeah. well it's probably someone on like one of those crazy tiers there's one person that's on the one thousand and two dollar tier yeah see there you go that's oh and there's one person on the almost two thousand dollar tier um and that's that'll do it for you uh but granted i i think it could still be fun i think i do agree with you that it it does have that like mobile game aesthetic to it i don't think that's a bad thing though i think it just looks very cartoony um which some people will find a lot of appeal in um i don't know i i don't have too much to say about this other than it looks really cool but it's probably just not my jam yeah, I definitely think this would be like a good jelly, not my jam type of a scenario because it does look like it could be definitely fun. And and I feel like it, it would actually kind of be nice. Like this is very similar to like a Loop Hero scenario where like Loop Hero, I felt like a, a large draw to that game for me was just the ease of it, not having to do much. You could play the entire game with just your mouse. Right. I feel like this would actually be a very similar scenario where like, Somebody might be drawn to this because of how easy it is. It's just like a nice little podcast game to like get into it. And once again, this, this might be construed as an insult, but it reminds me a lot of like the games I used to play when I wasn't supposed to in computer labs, like cool math games or like shit like that, like armor games. Like it, it reminds me a lot of my childhood in a weird way. And I kind of dig it. I'm going to be honest. Like, I don't think it looks like a real me game. Yeah. But I kind of enjoy the the aesthetic and the idea behind just like a one button game. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I, I think that that really sounds fun. So, of course, 
if you think it sounds interesting and you'd like to check it out once again it is called Cygin possibly C-Y-J-I-N the Cyborg Ninja Unique Precision Platformer it is over on Kickstarter they still have 31 days left to go so you have an abundance of time to go check them out and possibly give them a thousand dollars if you want <laughs> you know hey man just be generous some some of those people one someone gave two thousand dollars so dude i'm not shitting on anybody you just like like what you like that's awesome a thousand dollars is insane like i don't know you bill gates why are you investing in Sygen? you know what i mean but like fuck yeah let's go dude man. let's fucking go i mean bill turns out elon musk big fan of this game <laughs> maybe big fan. it's it's crazy how much money they could dump into kickstarters they could f- probably fund everything that's on kickstarter right now and they'd be like ah i've tickled my bank account like yeah yeah that's definitely true you make a good point you make a good point so it is time for us to hop into our audience questions this week we have a little bit less uh, we have fewer audience questions because we only gave them like two days advance notice yeah. but thank you so much to those who wrote in you're amazing so we've got wombat boy which I feel like we're slowly devolving outside of the Wombat Emperor because uh, Phil outed himself as apparently being a Wombat simp in our Discord, which I'm sorry, bro. Like, I'm sorry. (laughs) I loved it. It was such a good conversation. Um, I felt so bad when I saw the gif of, like, the why are you being mean to me? I was like, oh, man, I hope he's not really upset. (laughs) I don't know why I found that so much funnier. So that's why I posted the gif is like, he's dead. He's already dead. Leave him alone. Leave him alone. <laughs> uh, so the wombat boy writes in and says, if you found yourself in prison for five years, what strategies would you employ to survive your time in there? So big Josh boy, what, what strategies would you, you know, would you just like, I'd kill myself. okay, would you do the thing where like, <laughs> The first day you'd punch somebody in the face and be like, Ugh, look at these thick muskies, you know, no. would you do that? No way. Look, no, I'm, I'm strong when I'm compared to you, when I'm compared to people in prison. <laughs> Most people are strong compared to me. Yeah. You're like, you realize 90% of their day is working out. Yeah, right? dude. I'm a, I'm a punch the first guy I see and I'm gonna break my hands on his face. Yeah, he'll do that fucking anime shit where he catches your fist and just, and just crushes, crushes it, it easily. He catches it with these two fingers and crushes your fist and you're just like, how? Yeah, I, I have can definitely a, see that. I have a, a, this guy is like, he's he's basically part bear. He's one of my best buddies, but he's just this fucking lumberjack of a man. And I used to, back in the day, have these, these house parties where I'd get really drunk. I'd get way too drunk. And one of my favorite things about him is I can't hurt him because he's just too big. But I'd love to get extremely drunk and just try to like wrestle him, like roughhouse him. And there was one time I <laughs> I don't remember this, but he was telling me about it because I got blackout drunk. And I was like trying to like get to him and I was doing this and he, he had me by the arms and I was like trying to like wrestle my way out. And he's like, oh, no, he's going crazy. I'll have to use all my strength. And he goes like this. I like just two fingers. It was like, ah, and like pushed me back. And I was like, why are you so strong? <laughs> That's awesome. He's a, uh, yeah, he's, he's one of my best buddies, but he is just, he's like, you wouldn't know it. Cause he just, he looks, well now he doesn't, but he used to be a lot, a lot chunkier. Um, but you would look at him and you'd be like, Oh, he's just a fat guy. But then you would just like, he'd be like, Ooh, like come out of nowhere with all these fucking muscles. It was, very scary, um, but I, I don't know. I don't know why that made me think of that. But I don't. I don't think I'd have a strategy. Honestly, my strategy would be like hide in a corner and hope no one found me. Um, because dude, my ass is too fat to survive in prison. You know what I mean? I, like my strategy to survive in prison is just open the floodgates. You know, like like let's be honest. I'd I'd definitely be passed around like a bong at a prison. I've got like I got them thick. The th- I got them thick cheeks. The thick dude. cheeks, dude. Just, yeah, that's the good stuff. Um, I don't think I'd have the same problem. Um, I I don't know. No, you got a dog, big boy. <laughs> You're looking good. <laughs> See, and here's the thing. Like, 
I'm a more cushion for the pushing kind of a guy. Like you have to enjoy chunking your kids, but you got you you're looking good, big boy. You're you're like you're both thick and slim. Oh, you're it's true. You're the dream. I'm the dream package, baby. Uh, yeah, I don't know, man. I I guess I would have to try to like, cause here's the thing. Like, if you want to go through the route of like, oh, do you do you fucking kill someone? Do you fuck like hurt someone? Do you attack someone? You're gonna get longer sentence in prison. So you're just you're getting into that whole fucking all right. I'm I'm here kind of a thing. Um, five years is a fucking lot. Uh, so I guess I would just be stuck in there, but. Man, I don't know. I guess it depends on where I'm at in life. If like right now, if I had to go for five years, I would probably be worried about, you know, what's happening outside from like, do I have a wife? Do I have whatever, blah, blah, blah. Like if it, if I was just on my own kind of a thing and I was just in there for five years, I think I'd go like ham into it and be like, oh, I guess I have to fucking just like join a crazy gang and like now this is who I am to, to survive. You have to do what you do to survive. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. But with, with trying to like, consider the options or the people that are outside that i have to eventually come back to i'd be like i just have to i don't know fucking buddy up with anyone like (laughs) i don't fucking know man i i have no idea because i know nothing about prison i've never gone to prison so everything like i know is just out of like a movie so it'd probably be totally fucking different than what i think of anyway yeah i mean dude Five years is such an oddly specific number it that is. I feel like the Wombat Emperor is facing a couple years in jail. I know. He wants to know what I, we do. I hope He's not. trying to, like, on the down low, try to get our, our recommendations as to how he would survive. Yeah. And it's just like, dude, get clapped, you know? Get right? clapped. I mean, he's got that thick accent. They, they'd be like, be like, all right, you get to live, but you have Granted, to... Granted, you would assume it's like an Australian accent, though, or like an Australian prison. Oh, so they'd uh, all be used to it? Yeah, 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 they'd all I have guess. that accent. They Maybe. wouldn't give a shit. Also, dude, I didn't know that Australia was originally colonized by, and granted, there were indigenous people there, which is... I mean, there's indigenous people you know, in which, every place that we... Everyone yeah, and fucks it up. like why people just took over. We're just like, fuck it, this is ours now, which is super fucked up. Yeah, yeah that's just what we do. Not trying to glance over it or make jokes about it. We're just pieces of shit or have been in the past, so just gonna but uh like the fact that uh australia was originally colonized as like a prison island yeah yeah yeah. blows my mind Mm -hmm. like i didn't know that and when i first found that out i was like what what yeah like it's insane dude that's crazy but hey whatever is whatever floats your boat you know i guess um strategies that i would employ to survive in prison in all honesty i don't think i could i don't think i could survive in prison like uh it's just like i'm i'm too i would like to say i'm too good of a boy like i'm a piece of shit human being but i try not to break rules so i in in some way i would assume i got framed and went to prison you know what i'd just take a header you know what i mean like they'd be like it would have been five years (laughs) whatever (laughs) can't can't survive there also i feel like there's something that should be said here and i and this is just me getting serious because you you gotta love when i do these stupid shit where i'm the one who makes a joke and then i have to really apologize for it yeah i was making jokes about getting clapped it's not funny um like like prison rape the entire idea of it behind it is is not funny i feel like most people make jokes about it because it is like such a serious scenario that it's kind of like the i laugh to try not to cry Mm -hmm. there was i i forget who did a video but it was like a really really good video series about how uh male rape is actually depicted in like in in popular culture and in our media and how it's typically played off as a joke and how specifically prison rape is often a joke. Yep. And it's the the more demasculating, the more funny it is. And I do just have to say, I know I'm the one who made the joke and I do have to apologize for it. It's just something that I do. I was like, ah, it would be funny. And then also it's just like a really fucked up thing. I do not know that I could actually survive in prison. In no way do I think I could. I'm way too soft of a human being. I'm just going to be real about it. Yeah. I... I think I'd be right on the same scale. Like that's one of the things if I was going for five years, like I would just be like, well, my life is over. We're good. 
Damn. All right. And lastly, Zach writes in and says, what children's show movie or book scared you the most when you were younger? Mine was Cats from Courage the Cowardly Dog. Yeah. So, Big Josh, boy, what scared you the most? Cats from Courage the Cowardly Dog is a really good answer, but mine was a little bit before that. Um, If you're a fan of older uh, cartoons, uh, I used to like Ren and Stimpy. But there's one episode. I don't know if you'll you'll know this. Do you know anything about Ren and Stimpy? No. Huh? Oh man. I I've literally I've never seen the show before, and people say it's amazing. It's like Ren and Stimpy. I haven't watched like Rocco's Modern Life, um, Real Monsters. Like a lot of these '90s cartoons, yeah. literally never watched. Oh man, you gotta watch them. They're so good. Uh, where was it? I'm trying to find it so I could just like. Remind. Too busy watching baby Looney Tunes, dude. Fuck yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> um, fuck, I can't remember it. So there was one episode. This this show was all about like very over exaggeration when it comes to the animation for for different characters and things that were happening. And there was one where they went to like Mars or something. I think it was and he he was picturing them as these sexy alien creatures but they were actually something else or ah, fuck i can't remember what was happening but there was a lot of really questionable things in ren and stimpy that just the animation looked oh there was one where he's pulling out his teeth too oh god like some of the stuff in ren and stimpy is real fucking like scarring uh I, I would have to go with uh that show because there are just some moments that were like very questionable but it's a good fucking show. I mean, Should just the it. character designs of Ren and Stimpy, or specifically, I believe Ren is the like mouse thing, yeah, and yeah. it looks creepy. So creepy, dude. It was a good show, though. Um, you gotta love Powdered Toast, man. Uh, for me, what like it's not even a show that scared me the most. There's two things that scared me more than anything. One, I was terrified of the movie Signs when I was a kid. Signs? I don't even know why. Yeah, it's not a very scary movie. Like, honestly, Signs just freaked me out as a kid. And I don't get why. Um, Especially because for some reason I watched, like, we were watching the, uh, like, the director's commentary and they did a short film of basically like a killer robot and it was basically like like a battle bots robot like it was on wheels like it looked like a remote control car but for some reason i was scared of that and okay. like the the movie signs just fucking scared the shit out of me especially the whole like fingers underneath the doors that get chopped off thing totally freaked me out but then there's something that i feel like it actually scared me until i was like in my teens especially because i would have nightmares about it is Smeagol from the Lord of the Rings would like <laughs> that from, creepy from it it from the movies the the trilogy it's just so fucking terrifying yeah. and I liked those movies so much when I was a kid but every time that Smeagol would come on screen I'd hide and I feel like I never actually got to enjoy the story or actually comprehend what was going on because I would not watch those scenes and Smeagol's such an integral part to the plot of those movies that it just freaked me out so much. And I remember going to see, I believe uh return of the King in like IMAX. And it was a big deal. We got like, we sat like fairly up close, but it was still like pretty awesome. Cause I had never been to IMAX before. And I remember basically having my head buried for like 90% of the movie. Cause Smeagol freaked me <laughs> out. That's really funny. It was just terrifying, dude. And then I once like I it was like super late at night and I randomly came across an SNL skit and they had somebody dressed up as Smeagol. Immediately scarred me. I was like, <laughs> I'm fucking done. And then like I'd have nightmares of being attacked by an invisible person that's meant to be Smeagol. And the weird thing is that like I've always felt like in those movies, I was like, you could see their outline right there. Like you could see them. I don't know how you can't see them. So in my dreams, there would be such a vivid, like dotted outline of them. And I'd be like, they're right there. How could you not see them? <laughs> it was so weird though. Yeah, I was so terrified of Smeagol when I was a kid. Like legitimate terror. Hot damn. Well, all right. I don't even know why at this point. I get it. Like he's kind of, like he's kind of creepy, but he's not that bad. 
Like, ultimately, not that scary. Right. Out of And it just freaked me out. Out of all the things that could have been your nightmare, that is a pretty tame one. But but he's creepy. Oh, yeah. He's creepy. I get it. Definitely. Definitely. But that is the end of this week's episode. Thanks, everyone, so much for listening. If you would like to chat with us outside the show, you could do so in a bunch of different ways. Be sure to follow us at IndiePod over on Twitter for notifications of when our episodes go live, the developer interviews, to participate in general discussion about indie games for indie games news and so much more if you didn't realize the reason i paused is because i had to burp no big deal thought i was gonna throw up in my mouth it's fun Whew. please uh <laughs> follow us at indie pod you can follow me vaughn at high legion that's h-y-d-e-l-e-g-i-o-n you can follow me over on twitch uh it is twitch.tv slash hide legion same as my twitter i I'm not, uh, this is going to go live after, so it's really not going to matter. I'm not actually streaming this weekend because <laughs> tomorrow, Saturday, is my roommate's birthday. Or is it like his birthday party that he's having here? Mm-hmm. Um, granted, I think I'm just going to play World of Warcraft, but I like I think it'll be probably a little bit too loud and rowdy. Yeah, or yeah, loud yeah. and rowdy, so I don't want to have to like deal with that while streaming. And two... I actually am going back to my old job. So I have to change my streaming schedule because if I was to Twitch stream from 10 to 12, I would actually only get like five hours of sleep or so before I had to go to work Big the oof. next day. All right. Yeah, yeah. That's not fun. So I'm going to change my, my Twitch streaming schedule. I'm thinking maybe I'll, uh, I'll Twitch stream on like Friday, Saturday and like Tuesday or, or something else. I'm not exactly mm. sure how I'm going to do it, but it's going to be changed, uh, not just for the summer, but for just moving forward since I am going back to my old job. So it'll be interesting to see how it all works. Mm-hmm. I don't exactly know, but I'm still going to be Twitch streaming, of course, just uh, this week I'm not going to do it. And hopefully by like midway through next week, I'll know exactly what my new schedule is going to be and what I can like work with. Because I really want to get through Neo. I'm super close, and then I'm going to be playing some Bloodborne, so oh, I'm pretty stoked. Oh, damn. Look at all these Dark Hell Soul yeah. games. Dude, I can't... I honestly cannot believe that I'm clearing these games. Like, I'm not even joking. <sighs> if I can beat these games, anyone can. People are always like, they're too hard. They're impossible. If I can do it. Seriously, I'm not even jo- I'm not good at games. Like, you could do it. You just got to die like a thousand times on one boss. I literally spent 45 minutes on one boss like a while ago. It was on stream and I just died over and over again because I got crushed by someone's fat Uh, ass. That's one of my, that's one of my biggest, biggest nightmares when it comes to streaming. I hate when I'm doing so bad. Getting stuck. Yeah. Getting stuck on something. And I'm like, motherfucker. (laughs) It's just too. too I mean, luckily I like chose a genre where everyone gets stuck. Yeah. 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 yeah, That's (laughs) true. It's, it's just super hard, so it's just like, it kind of makes sense. It doesn't mean that there aren't people who, like, pop into the chat. They're just like, do better. And I'm just like, what? By what? Like, you've watched so much of this stream. In what world do you think I can do better? Yeah. Errol. Like, what what gave you that indication? Errol does that, that to I'm me not doing every time I stream. <laughs> Errol, literally, I... Does he pop in and say, get good? He just he pops... to me every he time. He just pops in and says, get good, and then leaves. And I'm like, motherfucker, <laughs> what are you doing? Yeah, he'll he'll hang out in mine for a bit, and we'll talk about him from Japan, or we'll talk about anime and stuff like that. But yeah, nah. he always pops in and tells me to get good, and I'm just like, dude, these games are hard. Yeah. <laughs> I'll be doing good in a game, and he'll be like, get good. I'll be like, I don't know what you're talking... <laughs> what do you want me to do, buddy? Get good? You're like, you want me to get better? Get- dude, it's impossible. I'm too good. I'm too good. I did get good. <laughs> I got good. I'm done. <laughs> And of course, you can check out the biggest of average Josh boys over on Twitter at the underscore Josh ninety. You can te- check out his Twitch streams at the uh, Twitch.tv slash the underscore Josh. Yes. What is your Twitch schedule again? I know you got Thursdays, but it's like Tuesdays and Thursdays. Tuesday, Thursday. Uh, usually, it's like ten or ten to eleven uh, Eastern time is when I start, and I play for like anywhere from two to three hours. All right. All right. And you do demos on Thursdays. Demo so Thursdays, go. baby. All right. Uh, real quick, just want to run through our housekeeping one last time before we hop off. Please check out the Jake Friend developer interview going live on, I believe, the 16th. Yes, the, the Wednesday, the 16th. It's going to be about their game Scrabdackle. 
please check that one out. So good. Head over to the IndiePod store over on Teespring for t-shirts and stickers. Please check out our YouTube channel. It's just IndiePod over on YouTube where you can watch these episodes on video. You can check out Josh's awesome reviews of games like Omori. So please do so. Uh, leave us reviews on any source or site in which you could do so. Specifically, iTunes supposedly helps us out a lot. And lastly, thank you so much to all of our amazing patrons in general. But, you know, made the uh, made the promise, so I got to do it for all of them. $3 and higher, of course, is John. Just John. That's his God-given name, by the way. It's just John. There's just nothing John. else. No last name, no no nothing, <laughs> just John. Then we got Will C, Mixomatosis, a.k.a. Mix, Zach Durham, Chase Hopkins, Philip Runcha, the Wombat Boy. No, don't start that. That's <laughs> that's me. He's the Wombat Emperor of Australia. Don't change it. <laughs> He's like, Josh is like, I'm not trying to fuck him I'm over not, anymore yeah, than yeah, I have yeah, before. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm, not taking, I'm not taking his uh, his status, all right? Uh, I love that it just seems like he might be slowly degraded to the wombat boy. <laughs> no, that's just what I call him when I write the questions. Uh, Chris Penwell, always drinking tea. Josh Nichols, a.k.a. Active Josh and Sam Fillion from Canada. Thank you all so much. You are all so amazing. And I forgot what I say at the end. <laughs> I was like, Join and what? Us next week for oh, more indie games. What a, I fucking forgot. What a fucking, Have a good week. What a fucking cliffhanger. I hope you just cut the episode there. <laughs> just and, and then it ends. Just be like, what? I might do that because I forgot what I say. I, oh, we'll talk to you all next week. That is the thing I wow. say every time. And you couldn't I remember I feel like that. I've said it for almost three years. It's a very easy thing to remember. And I'm just like, I, it's Fridays, dude. It's throwing me off. I know. That's true. I mean, I still don't remember my intro to my interviews you did that to me one time and you like mocked me and said my intro and i was like what <laughs> i was like oh <laughs> that's like, the thing i do was that's that? the thing i do like every week um yeah i don't know it's tough words are tough dude what are you gonna do all right we should end this what are we this is going on too long it's because look man i don't i don't want to write the full wombat emperor of Australia when I start doing that because I do it in a different format. And yes, I could just copy it with the full thing, but it there's formatting issues and whatnot. So it's just, you put in the boy, you get wombat, you know who I'm talking about. All right, get out of here with this. End this fucking episode. <laughs>